how to turn this like a slow moving coop into this. What's up, Dennis here, with a mixing lesson for you. Today we're gonna be talking about how I mixed Hardcore's vocal cover of Spiritbox's song called Constance. We're gonna be speaking about how and why I created such a vocal chain in this cover, how it differs from the lead and background vocals, about vocal bus processing, about production in general, and how to use spatial effects to create a space for vocals in the song. So this is the sound of the raw vocal that I was working with. I coercion and then cave in and wrap me in my bitterness. Solid vocals, they were recorded with a Shure SM7B into a Focusrite Scarlet and a preamp. The first effect that I used was some pitch correction software, um, medium fast speed so that it grabs the notes rather quickly but note transition is rather slow, so that we don't get the T-Pain effect and we still get that natural sound. Vibrato on, just in case. We set the scale, F-sharp minor in this case, and that's it. Dying sun burns in the night. I watch and glow, it's... And now the vocals are perfectly in pitch. The second plugin I used was an equalizer plugin to cut out some unpleasant frequencies. It's so speaking dot and also a high pass filter so that we don't get that annoying low end. And I'll get to this one in a minute. enough to escape it. Heretics So immediately our vocal sounds much much cleaner. Also, then I use a deesser. And face me. It barely does any work because hardcore doesn't have any problems with sibilance. And so I just set it on default settings and it worked perfectly. After that, I used a compressor, the first compressor, because I used two of them. And I used it in limiter mode and lock off just so that it cuts all the peaks that I don't need, so that the vocal gets rather smooth. And even... And then cave in it, wrap me in my bitterness, give it up, I'm As you can see, it doesn't do very much. It does just like only 3 dB of gain reduction. And also I made sure that the level of the vocal doesn't get louder, so I matched it. After that, I used a second compressor. And this one I used 41 ratio, medium slow attack and also medium slow release so that the vocal doesn't get squashed and because it's a rather soft vocal and I don't need that much compression. And then cave in and wrap me in my bitterness. Give it up, I'm complacent. Just enough to escape it. Sounds pretty good. So now that the vocal is even, I had to go back and listen to it in context of the mix. While I was listening to the vocals in the mix, I was thinking to myself, oh hey, this vocal has lots of low end. So I created a low shelf and while listening to the vocal in the mix, I turn it down until I hit the sweet spot. And the sweet spot was right around here for me, so because the vocals here are very low and very, well, it has, naturally has lots of low end, so I decided to cut it out a bit. After that, I decided to saturate the vocal to give it some slight tube saturation. Just enough to escape it, heretics wouldn't face me. So it just sounds slightly warmer. I also didn't like to saturate the low end because it can get a little bit messy, so I created a crossover at 300 Hz so that we only saturate the mids and high mids. Why I didn't saturate the highs? 
it's because later on I will use uh, Exciter and I don't want the high end to be very saturated so that we don't get lots of hiss. So that's just my preference. I also made another crossover at 8000 Hertz approximately. And now we have nice warm vocals. Lose the trust, I don't want it. Palms are off when you prom. That's how it sounds in the mix right now. We can think to ourselves, well, the vocal level is pretty okay, but it still is very buried in the mix. So therefore we're going to be using an exciter, which is Fresh Air by Slate Digital. And it's an amazing plugin. It's also free. And I love it very much because you can just twist two knobs and you get your high end dialed in perfectly. So let's do this together. Here we can start really feeling the sparkle right around here. Now we have a nice sparkly high end and also we need now that the vocals cut through a bit more. Might be even a bit too much so we can dial it back a bit. Yep, right around here. So this plugin makes a huge difference because the vocal immediately sounds sparkly and crisp and just really nice. I process the higher vocals a little bit different because as we can understand, his lower vocals have much more low end, but the vocals an octave higher up, they don't have that much low end. So I just did almost the same signal chain, but during the high vocals, I didn't cut the lows that much because there we cut like 6 dB and here we only cut 3 dB of the low end. I also did some dynamic EQ. Like a slow moving cool. Because on this note, I don't really like how it jumps out in the low end, so I decided to cut this very note with a dynamic equalizer. Memories this a day. And this note, memories this a day. I didn't like how harsh it was, so I cut some of the harshness also with a dynamic equalizer, and then it sounded much better. I also didn't use a deesser here because I felt that hardcore doesn't need it. It sounded perfectly fine without it. So let's go to the backing vocals. For the backing vocals, I have exactly the same signal chain, but I didn't use the Fresh Air plugin because I wanted the backing vocals to be kind of more dark and pushed back in the mix so that they don't really clash with the lead vocal, but they rather sit in the back and just fill out the space. In this case, I have them hard panned left and right, and they are an octave higher. Dying sun burns in the night. Oh, it's so hard for me speaking darkness because without those backing vocals the lead vocal would be a bit more back in the mix because the vocal is pretty low and we want some more high end so that it cuts through the mix better it's a really subtle difference, but it makes a huge emotional impact on the song and on the vocals in general. During the second verse, we have some harmonies and I decided to make them sound like the lead vocals. I copied the settings and I also had the fresh air plugin on because I wanted these harmonies to blend in with the lead vocal more and therefore I recreated the vocal chain and now it sounds really nice. 
innocence Give it up, I'm complacent Just enough to escape it hey. Yeah, and I also made them 15 dB lower because I didn't want them to clash with the main vocals, so I just made them sit in their own space. As for screams that we have at the very end of the song, my signal chain is rather simple because I only have an um, equalizer. I had to cut more frequencies here because screams are naturally much more harmonically rich, and I just made them sound more coherent in the mix this way. And also I use a de also standard settings, and JST gain reduction as a compressor. Here we are hitting a steady 8 to 10 dB of gain reduction, and that's pretty good sounding, but a big problem with this plugin is that when you turn it on by default, it makes the volume much higher and it can overcompress your vocals easily. So I had to dial back the gain knob quite a bit to make the levels match and also the slay knob so that the vocals aren't overcompressed because I didn't want to hit like 20 dB of gain reduction. As for the backing screams, I copied the exact same settings and they are triple tracked, left, left and right panning 50%. Pressure in it sounds really nice and wide and I love how they sound in the mix. We're getting a really nice ambience with the reverb. Now we're going to be speaking about vocal bus processing. So we are processing all of the vocals at the same time. I only have two plugins here. One is for limiting. One might think, why would you limit the vocals? And the answer is because the instrumental is limited as well. It has a limiter on it to make the vocals more coherent with the mix. We also have to limit them in order to achieve some kind of the same dynamics. Like a slow As you can see, it does very little. It just cuts a little bit of those peaks that I don't want and it kind of nails the vocal in place. I also turned on oversampling because sometimes when you don't have oversampling then it might not catch all of the peaks. The second plugin is bus compression, which I have dialed in pretty aggressively. As you can see, I have also here the bolt setting and we're getting... We're hitting approximately 10 dB of gain reduction, but I have it dialed back in the mix to 35% because I wanted it to be in parallel so that we have a very squashed version of the vocals right in your face. And this kind of glues the vocals to the front of the mix and makes it more aggressive because the instrumental is very thick, very huge, and we need to do something so that the vocal, vocal can cut through the mix better. Now let's talk about volume leveling, how and why I chose certain volumes for the vocals. For example, here we see that this vocal is minus 1 dB and the backing vocals are 15 dB quieter because I just wanted them to be in the background and the way I did it was I just selected those vocals and I completely turned them down in the mix like this and I turned them up until they sounded right where I wanted them to sound. That's a little bit too loud. And that's the sweet spot. And I did all of the same for other vocals. 
because I panned these hard left and hard right, and my backing vocals in the chorus, I panned 80% left and right, and I made them even a little bit more quiet, because I just wanted them to fill out the space and not clash with the lead vocal. So as for screaming, here we have the main vocal minus 7 dB, and the screams are approximately 8 dB quieter, 8.5 to be exact, and it sounded really nice like this. Another thing that we need to talk about is breath removal. We don't need that much breaths, so I just went in there and manually cut out all of the breaths during the backing vocals, as you can see it right here, and in the lead vocals, I took the breaths out and made them like 10 dB quieter. I did them all like this and well, they were like this and I just pulled them down because without breaths, it would sound really unnatural and with very loud breaths, they would be obnoxiously loud. So it's like a perfect balance. Dying sun burns in the night. I watch and glow, it's so Here the breaths are not overpowering, but if I were to do it like this I watch it. Here we can hear that they sound really harsh So this way it sounds much better Another problem I had to deal with was sibilance Because for example during screams, which were pretty heavily compressed The S in the word increments popped out in a not very nice way, so I had to cut out this S in the end and just turn it down like 11 dB. Incremate! This way it sounds okay, but if it were to be like this, this jumps out in a very unpleasant way. So I just turn it down, set it and forget it. The last thing I would like to talk about is spatial effects, such as reverb and delay. Here we have it rather straightforward. I just used a reverb with a rather long tail. I wanted it rather far. And also here you can see that I cut out lots of the low end. Um, all of this was just a preset that I chose. Here. but in reverb we don't want that much low end so I just cut it out and this way it doesn't clash with the actual low end of the instruments. As for delay we have a very simple stereo delay just one fourth in the left ear and one eighth note in the right ear. Uh, on the left we have less reflections because obviously um, it's longer delay and I don't want the delay to sound that long. Also, I filtered out the lows and the highs of the delay so that it also doesn't clash in the low end with the original low end of all of the vocals. I also didn't want it to be that bright. I want it just to be felt and not heard. So that's why I cut out all of the high end. <laughs> And now let's compare it with the low pass deactivated. As you can hear, it becomes really piercing and I don't want that from a delay. So that's why I chose to cut out all of the highs. As for reverb and delay on the lead and backing vocals, I chose to use a pretty generous amount of delay because in my opinion, that's what the song asks for. And I just turned it up until it was way, way too much. This level is way too much, and so I turn it down. And this, in my opinion, was the sweet spot. I was also pretty generous with reverb during the verses, during the chorus, I used less reverb and it sounded very good in this way. For the backing vocals, I used more reverb because I also wanted them to be rather pushed back in the mix. 
and as we can see for the screams I used lots of delay and lots of reverb because I wanted the screams really to have that drowned out very distant sound and I think it turned out pretty well. And then we have another element of the mix which is an ambient vocal melody which sounds like this before the second chorus. Really nice sounding. So I used minimal processing here. I just used some pitch correction software, pretty heavily pitch corrected because it's a very ambient sound and you can get away with using much more pitch correction. I mean, it, it isn't that hardcore needs lots of pitch correction. It just, I wanted the backing vocal to be almost synth-like sounding and heavy pitch correction definitely helps. And with the compressor, I didn't bother. Medium fast attack and also medium fast release. Smashed it pretty hard. It sounds totally all right. Now, as for automation of spatial effects, I did something very special here. I did a vocal fade out, as we can hear it in the beginning of the second chorus. For pressure in increments. And you can hear how it becomes really washed out towards the end. So the way I achieved it was automating the volume and automating the level of the reverb. Obviously this would work better with a very long reverb such as, I don't know, a Valhalla Shimmer or just any reverb that's like really bright and way over the top huge sounding. But it also works this way. So, and the way I did this was I used a pre-fader. So therefore this fader becomes independent from the level of the actual vocal. For pressure in increment. This way, actually, the volume of the vocal becomes lower, but the reverb of the vocal gets more prominent in the mix. And this way we get that washed out feeling also because the reverb is in stereo and the lead vocals are in mono, so it gets nice and white towards the end. So that was it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. This was Dennis, see you in another video, goodbye.